Welcome to AFD TV. I'm Dr. Steve Semidrala. I'm here with Greg Simmons, uh, entrepreneur who's interested in bringing medical marijuana to the state of Tennessee. So that's, of course, a <laughs> that's a very complex question, and so very on. So, so, so what's what's what are the plans out there on bringing medical marijuana? Well, it's really a uh, a process, um, a sequential process, and the first process that we have to do is, of course, get the legislation in place. And that involves a lot of education of our uh, general, general population in Tennessee, as well as our political uh, figures. And so the political figures know the population base wants this medical marijuana, and we have to educate the politicians on how to do that. And that's the process that we're in. Got it. And uh, so what are the economics of medical marijuana into, say, our state? Well, that's a pretty broad topic as well. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that I believe is that the, the, the green rush, as it's called, is going to be one of the most significant economic events of our time, bracketed by five years, perhaps, either side of this. And the reason that I say that is because we have a full mature market, the demand exists out there, and it's at currently in a black market status. And what we're simply trying to do is bring that demand in the black market into the light of day and make it a legitimate business. And so over the years, we've seen cash crops estimated across the country and cannabis regularly even though it's an illegal crop still comes in in the number one or number two cash crop in Tennessee each year as far as production of absolutely over any other crop out there that's right wow even tied with tobacco tobacco corn soybeans whatever you have uh, and that's it's not unique to Tennessee it's it's across the country um, you see uh, California has a very robust obviously uh, marijuana um, um, uh, econ economy. Uh, Kentucky has a very robust uh, economy around cannabis. And it's, it's just really a fascinating thing to watch because, like I said, it, it's this massive pent-up demand that's currently existing. And once you m make that, bring it in the light of day, as I like to call it, it's, uh, it's just going to be really a phenomenal thing to watch. And it's exciting to be on, in a new industry without any rules. To, to, to You, you kind of get to set the table, so to speak. It's a lot of fun. To mold it in a way that's ideally as safe and effective as possible. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm a father, and uh, I'm a humanitarian, and I believe in, in safe access. I believe in, in a lot of the things that people have concerns about, obviously. I don't want my kids having access to it prematurely. And, um, you know, I don't think anybody else does. And that's one of the the main uh, places that we see pushback is, well, what about the children? And what I have to educate people on is actually that the illegal nature of marijuana has propagated the, the black market and makes it easier for our children to have access to marijuana. So how would you propose legalizing marijuana in the state of Tennessee different than, say, what they did in California? Well, that's another great question, and um, California was very early on in their, mer in their medical program, and it, it's not as controlled as you might like, and I think you saw evidence of that because of the federal raids that took place over the, the past decade in California and, and around their business practices. What we see in Colorado and Washington, not so much Washington yet because it, they're, they're just coming up, they're coming online with recreational marijuana. And recreational marijuana and medical marijuana are two completely different things, but I'm talking recreational now. So Colorado, what we're seeing with recreational is they, they've done a very good job in developing developing a, a system that has checks and balances and regulation in place along all uh, stops in the production process and distribution process. And I think it's a very good, robust um, um, system. And so what I would propose is much adopting, uh, adopting as much of the Colorado process and legislation as we can here in Tennessee to basically mirror that. We see what they're getting in Colorado and we want what they've gotten. So rather than reinvent the wheel, I would suggest adopting what they've already put in place. And of course, we can over time tweak that to our to our own state. Great. And what about the recreational marijuana? What's your stance on that? Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm for recreational marijuana. I think that um, in, in a society where we have a, a lot of problems with uh, heroin addictions come into the mainstream recently again with uh, 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 Philip Seymour Hoffman. And we see uh, problems with opiate addiction and prescription pain pills is on the rise. And alcohol abuse has always been a problem. And for me, I see those three, um, those three areas of abuse where you can actually substitute cannabis in as a much more benign substance to any one of those that I just mentioned. What about all the talk about marijuana being, say, the gateway drug? 
Right. Well, I think if, if marijuana was a truly a gateway drug, then you would, you would expect to see a much higher population of heroin users, of meth users, and other hard drugs, because there's certainly a lot, much larger uh, portion of the population that has tried and used and continues to use marijuana on a regular basis, and it just doesn't go hand in hand. What, what really the only place to where the, the gateway argument is, is true is that it's an illegal substance. And if you have to go get an illegal substance, well, these drug dealers, they're, they're out there trying to provide for their families too. They don't want to get busted. So what happens is, is they have somebody that comes in, maybe starts off smoking a little pot, and now they, they see this person's regular, that they're safe. Now I'm going to move them on to a higher profit margin product. Got and it. that's generally the way the, the gateway system works. So by taking the illegal nature out of cannabis, we've now removed the gateway connotation around cannabis. That makes sense. And also uh, Tennessee, from an economic standpoint, we border eight states. That's right. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of great things around Tennessee, and we're uh, centrally located to, I think, 60% of the population in the United States, and we've got great distribution system here. So once the, nas once the talk then becomes about national programs, national brands about cannabis, Tennessee is a great place to be uh, located in order to take advantage of it. Well, that. I guess we're the whiskey capital, right? Between That's Tennessee right. And Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and, and I think from a medical standpoint, the challenge for us has been being that marijuana is an illegal substance, there hasn't been as much medical research in it because it's against the law, of course. But mm -hmm. now with California, Colorado, and uh, Washington State, where it is more legal, ideally there will be more research in this mm -hmm. so we can evaluate as right. a medical community. That's absolutely true. And one thing that I'd like to point out is that uh, there's a lot of people that use that argument about against legalizing marijuana. And what they what people generally don't realize is that there are actually 22,000 studies on marijuana that are published currently, and that number increases every day. Marijuana is actually a very well understood uh, um, drug. I don't even really consider it a drug. It's more of an herb. Um, and, it, you know, mankind has used this. There's, there's evidence of use of marijuana from back uh, 2,900 years B.C. in Chinese tombs. Wow. And so, you know, the human species has evolved with this plant, and it's the human species has used this plant all along the evolution. It's only until recently, in the last 70 years, that we've deemed this, this bad drug to be illegal. Yeah. And so what, what's happened is is that it's this, this thing that's, that's evolved with us, and it, it actually has a lot of, um, what would you call it? Uh, I'm losing my Stigma? words. Stigma? Stigma, no. Yeah. A lot of um, synergies, synergies uh -huh. with the human species and this plant because I believe that we've evolved together. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, and there's a lot of varieties of the plant. Yeah, there's uh, currently about 1,600 recognized oh. strains. Um, some would argue plus or minus on that, but roughly 1,600 strains. Yeah. Well, and one of the, the main strains that you're hearing a lot about in the press is Charlotte's Web. And that's, of course, because of the uh, high CBD cannabidiol concentration as opposed to THC, Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabol, that actually is the more... Um, psychological effective agent. The CBD in the Charlotte's Web is what people like uh, uh, the Coosers are using, Cooser Coon Bill here in Tennessee, the Coosers are using to mitigate the epilepsy of their daughter. Oh, so they funny. have these daughters, uh, they have a daughter, these daughters, they have people with Dravet syndrome and other epileptic conditions that respond, that don't respond to conventional drugs, conventional treatment. And so they use cannabis and they're going from 300 seizures a day to five seizures a month. Yeah, that's amazing. I, that I've been very familiar with, so it's a, it's a wonderful story. So uh, yeah, well, thank you so much for watching uh, AFD TV and for joining us, Greg. Thank you, Dr. And we'll Sam. Have to have you come back uh, there's this is a, the big question and and I do agree that kind of like the lottery or even gambling or, or so on I mean as as a few states offer it eventually it's it's going to be widespread and if it's going to be widespread better to be on the safe side and be ahead of it Absolutely. Right. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sam. The medical advice provided in this video is informational and strictly the opinions of Dr. Sam Udrala and AFD Clinics. For a personalized medical opinion, please consult your primary care physician or visit one of America's Family Doctors Clinics today.